So thank you very much, Rose. So this is going to be your le last effort. To you must be exhausted after the last night dancing and and the food. The food was delicious. Anyway, let's put that less formal, right? And then I will come with you. And uh, well. That was a, quite a challenging introduction, uh, Rose. I mean, it seems that I've done so many things I was hardly following. Um, anyway, uh, yes, I'm going to talk. I've been asked to talk about uh, neuroplasticity and the uh, young brain, the present and challenging for the future. Right, so it's a sort of transition final lecture into what is going to be said in Paris around this topic and the following the ICD meeting. That is my disclosure information. And I have also to put that, if you don't mind, there are some slides on which has been loaned by, by friends. So if you could uh, avoid taking too many pictures, I will be grateful. You can take picture of me, <laughs> but not of, not of the content, especially not where there are, uh, where there are specific data unpublished. Uh, that is not for me, but for friends who trust me, and and of course, no, 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 no telephone, please. So, yeah, I, I'm always using the word destiny with the patients, with the parents, especially with the parents. You know, when you had to give very sad news, you say that the newborn has been said as having a, a genetic uh, disorder. Uh, or having a PVL, a leukomalacia in a newborn uh, like that. So the question is not to talk about lesion. The question is talk about the destiny. They are going to ask you, yeah, but what is going to be the future of my child? Uh, surely the future is not written there. It's not written in the gene. The future is not uh, written in the lesion, in the cyst. The future is not there. And now, good enough, science, neuroscience are telling us, are telling the future rely more on to the epigenetic factor, the early intervention. And then we go to the topic of this morning, adaptive brain plasticity. That is the, the super phenomenon, which is in our brain, which is the basis of uh, this hope for the future of our children. You start early in program of intervention. You take advantage of the critical period of plasticity. But we must know, we must, we must know more about those words. Words which are also substance. So let's go what we know nowadays. We know what is uh, the operational definition of brain plasticity, capacity of the neuron, the neural circuits to change. In, res in response to experience. So you have change, experience, activity. They are the key words for plasticity. And then, of course, we know, thanks to those uh, discovery in neuroscience, we know that uh, electrical activity, the way in which experience is translated into the neural cir circuits, and then generated functional structural plasticity. And now we know quite a lot about the cellular, the molecular factor, which are very important for this translation from experience to plasticity and to change again into the behavior. That we know a lot, and we know that uh, plasticity concerns all the, the main uh, functions, from behavioral, learning, memory, brain development, in brain repair. So plasticity is very important for them. And there are different timing for plasticity of the different function, which is something we had to keep in our mind. The window is not unlimited. Brain plasticity is more in given period for a function, and then at another given period for another function. And then uh, that is the, the, the network, the synaptic network, and the change the, and the enrichment, which is at the base of what is happening in your brain, thanks to this phenomenon of, of plasticity. And that is something you have to keep in mind, the, the phenomena around plasticity. So there are different levels. There are the level of molecular, 
what is happening in the receptors, in particular GABA and NMDA, AMPA receptor, which are the basic platform for the communication. And then the anatomical structure changes, the synaptogenesis that you saw in the previous slide, and then the functional, how they function together, how they influence together. So that is the, what is playing around during the phenomena. So have a look at this slide, because I'm going to repeat this slide many times, because that is a sort of conceptual framework for us to keep in mind when we try to understand or to induce a, a brain, an adaptive brain plasticity in as time sensitivity, multi-level integration in the young brain. You have behavior, the network, the synapses, the signaling cascade, and then uh, you have, of course, genes are extremely important, but gene together with the epigenetic uh, modulation, they, they, then they use the network, the synaptogenesis, the pruning of the synapses, the signal is cascade, and then you see the network, everything is uh, interacting together a more or less in critical and sensitive period of this phenomenon. So it's a very complex uh, process that we are starting, however, to understand, especially we start to understand how they interact each other and with the function. It's a magnificent process, plasticity, which is happening in the brain. Unfortunately, sometimes it's not for good. Unfortunately, sometimes we have, as I'm going to present you, some maladaptive plasticity. Not necessary, if it's not led by us, by the experience, plasticity can be also a bad thing. Hard to read what is on top. But that is why, what we are doing now. We are trying to have and to induce a series of neuromodulator. We are trying to lead this complex process, thanks to our intervention. And they, uh, in the next uh, minutes, I will try to say a few words around the, the most important today, and especially for the future, neuromodulator that we can put on in order to lead uh, this cascade, to lead those processes for us. So that now we can read more. So there are different series of uh, neuromodulator, the behavioral one, like physical therapy, active physical therapy, constraint, other type of uh, environmental, what we are basically, we are, we are doing us. There are splendid neuro behavioral neuromodulator, there are pharmacological neuromodulator, I'm going to speak about that very shortly because that's another path very important for the future. And there are the electrical neuromodulator, I'm going to, to say some words about that. And then uh, the magnetic field modulator, and then the cell-based neuromodulation, like in stealth, stem cells, a hope for the future. So they are all, and they put all horizontally because they're not one of them more important than the other. And they have to work together, as I will try to, to, to explain and to motivate you to, to agree in the next. Uh, so let's see, I'm going to provide you some example of, uh, of uh, neuromodulation in kids with, uh, with uh, lesion mainly, especially around uh, the motor aspect of uh, plasticity, just to take one as a model, but then, of course, uh, language, uh, of course, cognition can be perception, uh, are other fields in which also to, there are a lot of experience. Let's start from behavioral modulation. That is, I'm sorry, I mean, people who have been listening to some of my presentations, I think you get annoyed about this slide, because I'm presenting all time. Uh, I think it's fascinating. And that is the link between uh, uh, the labs and the field the labs and the bed. The, the new approach of, of biologists, uh, they abandon uh, the model of impoverishing condition to understand the function, the role, the environment, and they take the model of uh, this enriched environment. So see, what happens if you enrich the environment around uh, a baby or uh, an adult uh, animal model? So they invented I'm also repeating all the time this joke, but I like very much. They created this sort of club med uh, environment for the animal, you know? A club med, a spa, having all type of uh, toys, uh, friends, uh, and not bad cats around, no stressful experience, ideal condition 
for an animal to grow up or social interaction. There are no autistic over there if you, if you, put, a, 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 if you put an animal uh, around there. So, and so what they are discovering are extraordinary effect of putting an animal, even an animal have, um, have, having a knockout model for some of the diseases we are dealing with. Uh, we published recently in an uh, obscure journal, Developmental Medicine Child Neurology. Where is Bernard? No, no, not around. Oh, good. Um, anyway, we published uh, this uh, review in which we were describing different models of uh, uh, different model of animals for Down syndrome, fragile X, red syndrome, epilepsy, autism, and same there are for brain lesion, and seeing the effect of, uh, of putting them, those animals, into Club Med cage and see the effect on behavior, which are extraordinary, especially if you put them early in with the mother, and you see extraordinary cellular effect multiplying synapses, which are missing in those animals as a basic effect of a disorder. And that is also extremely important. We are getting the knowledge of which are the molecular factor induced by, the induced by a good environment. We produce, uh, also us, which are not really very young, we are still producing very good neuromodulator, like BDNF and many other, which are induced by simple interaction, talking with friends, other friends' animals, doing physical activity in a playful way. That's a way to produce that. So that is understood, so you can create a model I strongly recommend that you search this literature, especially this review. If you are interested, even without taking too many pictures, if it is possible, you can write to me and I can easily send you literature. I won't do that, my, my secretary will. So you can trust her, not myself. Um, anyway, um, so now we know what is happening thanks to those neuromodulators, this endogenous pharmacotherapy which is still the best pharmacotherapy is available. The way in which the environment, the good environment, not all environment, a playful, a good environment in using the, the production of many molecular effects, I'm not describing that, going in different direction for the interaction of the cells, for the synaptogenetic processes, and they create incredible enhanced plasticity, an incredibly good effect in the animals, but also in human. Let me say, that is a paper that we published many years ago, doing a very simple story. We were just doing infant, enriching the environment of preterm babies, just doing gentle massage. Not a touching, I don't, I don't have time to show you the film. So the film where very beautiful hands of a woman touching the baby, you know, the infant massage, speaking with and having a beautiful music on the background. Mozart, that was Mozart. Uh, beautiful music. And see just what's happened, just giving a couple of weeks of, uh, of the stimulation in the, in the, or the new or the preacher. We publish uh, many papers around that. And then we are also using a model, an animal model of newborn, uh, newborn uh, mice, doing the same. I mean, they were uh, university students touching gently. We didn't use Mozart, I believe. And we didn't, I don't know which kind of music we use, good for, for the, the mice. Uh, anyway, we are enriching the environment of the animals, and the result was extraordinary because we were. Uh, Again, I have no time to describe, but just to, to tell you that the massages infants show a faster maturation of visual function, VP, visual acuity, EG. They had less cortisol, less the hormone of stress was reduced, which is very bad for brain development. And then uh, better IGF, which is neuromodulator, the same you saw before in the animals, that was also higher, just doing an infant massage, couple of weeks of gentle, t as mother do, you know, with the, their newborn. And then they found in the rats the same stories, too, too, too many data to show, but basically animal model and newborn infant, they are showing the same molecular mechanism. 
for an adaptive plasticity of the brain and the good development of the brain. So, let, let's say we, can, we need to talk about a rich environment for our babies as well. Uh, like uh, we're beautiful shown by this systematic review and meta-analysis of the group of, uh, of uh, the group of Sydney. They were considering the whole literature in where they were, thanks to parent training or coaching, they were providing an rich environment for babies, for infants having a brain lesion and having a, a, a cerebral palsy then. And then this uh, the number of paper that, we pub that they found, and they found that if you enrich the environment, mainly through the parents, you have strong effect. That was already mentioned by Peter Rosenbaum the other day, in which they say the strongest effect on the child development was giving, enriching the maternal attitude and parental attitude toward them. That is very much confirmed in the literature. And then, uh, so the, the enriching environment is the basic, uh, very important message that you, can, you need to give uh, to enhance plasticity in your babies. And that is confirmed by me. Of course, again, you had to, to provide uh, a good environment, you know. So the, what is uh, challenging, which is very important at the moment, is a strategy to provide a good environment and the good environment is very nicely synthesized by the word game, which is the basis of uh, a new approach to early intervention in cerebral palsy, which at the moment is in a very large randomized controlled trial, uh, which involves uh, several continents, you can say. Right. Um, so, and they have already resulted that Katie Morgan, who is uh, leading this group, uh, and they were they were, they've been showing that thanks to game, providing a home, goal, activity, motor enrichment, you might change the future of this infant. That's coming from the pilot study, and hopefully will be confirmed uh, by the proper randomized controlled trial. But then uh, I would like to spend the next five minutes talking about uh, something different, which is more specific for motor, more specific for hand function, as another example. So there are sensitive period in that. The sensitive period for the cortical spinal tract is very short. It's one or two years in human. Later on, the door of plasticity is almost closed. So it's essential to do that in the first, uh, in the first uh, two years of life in which there are spontaneously very strong and activity-dependent phenomena. And the major one is the projection of the cortical spinal tract, which is uh, originally at birth a lot of ipsilateral projection, not going contralateral, that they should uh, be, but going ipsilateral, and they are withdrawing the, during the maturation. And this process is activity-dependent. This process of reducing the ipsa and the enhancing the contralateral, as it should be later on in the, in the older babies, that is due to the activity of their hands. So it's an activity-dependent process. That has been shown, especially by the group of Newcastle we are collaborating with, and you can use magnetic stimulation to observe that. So at birth, if you stimulate the ipsilateral uh, so if you stimulate one cortical spinal tract, you get an activation of both hands and that gradually disappears. But what's happened if you have a lesion, like here? You have a lesion, like in a stroke, so what's happened? That is very nicely shown there. At the beginning, you get stimulating here, you get in the control on the both hands, you get potential because there are projection contra and ipsilaterally going on. But later on, all the pre still existing projection around the lesion, which are always still existing despite the lesion, they disappear, they, they disappear around six months. There are no more potential. It's a silent, silent potential. You, you cannot stimulate and have an activity on the, hand, on the lesion at the hand. They dis why they disappear? Because of the activity of the good hand. The good hand is an activity-dependent phenomenon destroyed 
forever, the remaining fiber. This is an extremely important phenomenon, and everything, uh, most of the cases, is controlled by the healthy hand, which generate by stimulation absolutely synchronous pot potential on both hands. So you see what is the activity of the activity of not having an activity, not moving the paretic hand, what induce as a maladaptive plasticity in your brain. So the question that we have a time window for early treatment, we had to try to find a way to maintain active those, those remaining existing fiber. How to do that? That's the question. And, uh, well, you can think of baby chimp. You know, you can see, let's reduce the activity of the good hand to maintain those. That's, uh, uh, there are works in progress for that. There's the first paper published, the pilot study, in which they found, using baby chimp, in this kind of, uh, of babies with a stroke, they found an improvement of unilateral, unilateral ability in children. Another ideal way will be to say to the child, to the infant, please move that hand. Not easy to do, huh? Not easy to take your two months old baby and say, could you please move that hand? So we had to try to induce activity, active, actively. One way could be to use a model of imitation, early imitation. Uh, meaning action observation training, which is in, in progress at the moment on a, on, a, on a study that we are doing, uh, PISA, Andrea Guzzetta, and the uh, Rose Boyd group. Well, this is very simple, you know. You have movements that you show reaching in tiny babies, and you try to induce movement of the paretic hand by imitation, because the mirror neural system is available already at birth. So that could be, but there are, we want to find out a way to, to have active and not passive movement, to prevent, uh, by activity, to prevent, uh, to prevent uh, maladaptive uh, plasticity for lack of activity. So variable, goal-directed, baby and family, early and intense. So shortly, so activity and what, uh, how to induce a good activity is the basic neuromodulator, something we all are working on. But there are maybe hopes from pharmacotherapy. Yes, there are, there are some data available. Uh, those data are getting the information from the animal model. You know, you get the information which molecule could induce uh, uh, the good changes in plasticity and then to, to try to, to increase uh, the quantity of that. Sometimes by simple things, that's a very interesting study, using green tea. Suppose many of you are a green tea drinker. Probably after my lecture, you will increase. <laughs> Actually, I have some disclosure to the nuns. I'm paid by the people from the green, green tea companies. Um, right, uh, this is just one of the many studies showing that giving the, the, the epigallocatechin, which is the substance within green tea, you may improve uh, quite well, basic memory functions and other cognitive function in modeling of Down, Down syndrome. And interesting enough, there are studies also in uh, adolescent uh, with uh, Down syndrome, showing again, uh, thanks to green tea, you might have effect on the brain and brain plasticity. That is very interesting. And uh, fluoxetine, fluoxetine, I suppose, no, you have a good mood, especially today, after such a wonderful dinner we had last night, so you didn't take your daily dose of uh, fluoxetine, because you had from your good mood. You had from activity, right? But sometimes it's needed to give, uh, you know what is the most important effect of fluoxetine for mood? Increase of BDNF, increase of those neurofactor, neuroprotective uh, factor, which has been found in the animal that is essential for brain plasticity. That is the most important effect of fluoxetine. This has been shown in the animal model of, uh, of uh, Down syndrome, preventing uh, the Alzheimer process in uh, adult, uh, in adult uh, mice. But that is even more important, study published in Bray, in which they were giving they were giving fluoxetine to newborn or, or even to the mother 
having a baby mice, baby mice with Down syndrome model. And just giving very early, they eliminated any behavioral effect of Down syndrome. That's extraordinary. Maybe too extraordinary than in, in USA, Texas. In USA, Texas, they are having a program now in which they are giving Prozac to mother having a baby in pregnancy with Down syndrome. I'll shut for a second because I found shocking this news, I must say. I found really shocking this news. It might happen in the States. Sorry, there are some American friends, some Yankee friends around. Uh, sorry, no, no, I mean, there's an exception, of course. Uh, but it was shocking about that. I mean, especially if you think of the many papers existing of the effect of, flu of fluoxetine during pregnancy. For instance, for autism. There are, there are clear-cut data showing, I just point. And so that gives you the idea of my, how careful we must be with the data coming from the animal, jumping not immediately from animal to giving hope from that, but very careful studies and are needed. But another one is EGF-1. EGF-1, given another neuromodulator, was able to change dramatically the fate of animal model or rat. Again, canceling the behavioral disorder in rat animals. And there are interesting preliminary data, I'm quite happy to say, done in Italy on the use of uh, EGF in children, in girls with, uh, with the rat uh, syndrome. But they are very preliminary. They are mainly safety, although there is also an efficacy studies. But they are very complicated. They have to be given with, in the medulla, you know, in the spinal cord. So very invasive. So they are prominent data, very interesting. But so far, the good environment is the best and the safest drug for our brain. Good. Last few minutes. How many do I have? Yes, I have a sort of five minutes. Right? I'm just covering another potential way to give a neuromodulation to our brain, which is the electrical one. Actually, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sorry for you. I'm a replacement today. So the first choice was uh, our uh, close American friend, Bernadette Gillick. She had to come here and give a lecture, the good lecture, you know. But then she couldn't come at the last minute, so I'm, uh, yeah, I'm here as a replacement. Uh, and uh, good enough that uh, Bernadette uh, sent to me some slides, so I acknowledge very much some of the slides I'm going to show in the next five minutes, no more, Chairman. Um, will uh, concern, uh, which is the specialty of Bernadette in, in her lab in Minnesota. She's doing wonderful work, and there are other groups like Kirtan in the Canada, but there are a few groups starting to use the neuromodulation, which means uh, current, uh, continuous current, uh, or magnetic uh, stimulation in the brain of babies having stroke, for instance, and uh, which is, uh, the term is non-invasive brain stimulation, NIBS, which is non-invasive, non-painful, minimal side effect, application of adult and children, application study done in typically development, and study done in some, uh, also in some neurodevelopmental disorder. All the data, let me say, are very preliminary. Again, that is very much for the future, what I'm going to say, although, Look in the literature, I would like to thank uh, my collaborator. They've done that last night. Very fresh data. Very fresh data, proven by the date over there, May 30. Uh, and you see the, how the number of publications around neuromodulation, but also neuromodulation together with rehabilitation. We are there. That is going to be the message I'm giving to you. All those things even when not only function is induced, but everything is improved, everything is multiply, multiplied. If you, it is done, pharmacotherapy or whatever, or electric stimulation, whether it is done together with the, the functional modulation. So that is important. And uh, there are, at the moment, in clinical trial, again last night, there are in clinical trial, there are more than 100 studies 
and 45 are recruiting, and then uh, some of them, uh, most of them recall concern mood disorder, huh? depressive, which is nowadays. And there are, uh, no Georgia, no? Uh, but still, uh, there are quite a number of uh, studies running around, around that. Uh, yeah, if you move on more information, buy this book, very good book. I, I, not conflict of interest, exceptionally, I didn't write a chapter on that. <laughs> uh, no, this is a very good book, which uh, appeared last week, last, last year, uh, showing a lot of uh, good studies and Bernadette's work and Adrian uh, Adam Kirton one. So that is the technique, uh, technique for transcranial direct current stimulation, techniques for, for uh, for uh, TDCZ, uh, for the trans transmagnetic, which are slightly different. They, we know that uh, can be either more to investigate the effect or more to produce uh, more lasting uh, changes. Changes on what? Changing in the membrane potent potential, modulate gene expression, influence the expression on neurotrophin. The same stories of neurotrophin I was talking about. BDNF, EGF1, modulate the number of neurotransmitters, glutamate and GABA, and same for TDGS. So they induce, we know what is happening in the brain, thanks to, to those current. So if I, if I have, and I, I will stop now, because maybe in the discussion I can give you more information. If I, if I may say, it's a very promising approach. I'm sure you will hear more about that in the coming uh, EACD meeting. You can already register to, for the next three years, if you wish. Uh, we'll be surely here more, because I know, I think it's gonna be a, a future, another future tool for us. But still, uh, you have to think that the effect of stimulation is still not completely known. The side effects are also not completely known. There are, we don't know exactly the dose to be used, and there are many more studies in adults than in children. The machine costs very little. It should be around 8,000 euros, especially the machine for uh, direct current. So it's quite cheap compared to other things. But, and there are, will be a lot of people offering that. But you have to keep, keep, keep in mind, there are many studies on progress, but there are no so far, sure guarantee application, sure guarantee if uh, no side effect. So there are also, st I will just uh, go through the slide without coming, just to tell you the number of studies in progress using that. Studies published in uh, our journals, like uh, developmental medicine, child neurology, already 10 years ago, showing some effect. Huh? As I said, I'm not commenting because I, I saw a bit nervous, the chairman friend, but believe me, there are an increase in literature, especially as far as the motor function is concerned in, in children who had a stroke, some of our, especially when that is combined with uh, constraint induced therapy, active therapy, combination of electrical stimulation and activity seem to be a multiplying factors. And that has been shown uh, by dynamometer, assisting hand assessment, and then uh, again you find the same name, Kirton, published in very good journal in children with stroke, and many other studies in CP, and adverse effect uh, so far seems to be very limited, like headache or very, very limited side effect, but that is still, uh, I mean, they published studies so far, huh? And so that is uh, the study we have been doing, which was on a poster here, and you can find in clinical trial. We also didn't find any significant side effect by using electrical stimulation, which is reassuring, but still a uh, lot of more studies are needed. Let me just go to the end of the story. Uh, there are a lot of uh, studies trying to understand better the dosing, and there are uh, protocol and risk mitigation guide. This one you can, uh, maybe you can even take a picture of it, if you like, because that is a very nice paper by, by Bernadette, which is available in the literature. We tell you the direction of the future, some guideline for new trial. 
for new pilot study, I will add. So it's just out a few weeks ago. And I think if you want to, to know more information, go to that. So that is the line of the different, I didn't talk about, didn't speak about stem cells, of course, which is another interesting approach to stimulate by cells, to induce, but that should go into this framework. You know, framework of activity, behavior, the critical period, all attempt to induce pl brain plasticity. We need the framework, a complex framework like this one to analyze. So that is uh, more or less what I was trying to tell you as a final lecture of today. Thank you for uh, your attention.